Hey guys, welcome to New York's John F. Kennedy Airport, my home for 36 years with American Airlines. We are going to fly an FSI panel 2020 from Microsoft Flight Simulator Scenario. Fuel truck is in position. From JFK to Boston. I love this uh, this program, FSI panel. I'll show you how to operate it. However, if you want to go over, it's about $50 for the advanced edition. You can do multiple approaches, put yourself on base, downwind, dogleg, final, short final, all configured. And in some aircraft, the PMDG 7-3 fleets, the Phoenix A320, and the Leonardo uh, MD-80 2, it'll load your box for you, your, your uh, clear shield control panel, mode control panel, do kind of everything mostly for most of the aircraft including this one although this is in a beta phase this one is actually being transitioned over to be one of the more integrated ones uh, you, you it, it just it just makes a communications platform however this one it can do cockpit flows for you change frequencies for you it's uh, pretty good you can even now a new thing that they're doing is uh, coming up with uh, options you can actually decide what you want to do so it's sort of like that sim but without the humiliation, and it's also uh, gives you vectors, it gives you holding, uh, malfunctions, diversions, so it's really good practice for a pilot, um, but and it's got some features which I'm going to show you. Uh, if you, uh, this will be bookmarked, it will be a two hour video for a 40 minute flight because of the FSI panel instructions and everything. So go ahead and bounce through on the, the, the timestamps that I'll put there if you want to uh, miss out on the FSI panel. JP is the guy that runs FSI panel 2020 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. He's the developer. He's also an airline captain for Middle East Airline. Sounds like he's uh, a French citizen. A real cool guy. Does a great job. He's very responsive. If you do a video like I'm about to do, and you send it to him and he likes it, he'll leave it as an example for this particular scenario. But that'll become clear as we get moving along here. So um, let's, uh, sh let me show you what I did before we get started. So before you ever boot up Microsoft Flight Simulator, this was already done, you open up Fl Flight Simulator uh, FSI panel after you buy it. Now Microsoft Flight Simulator will not be open, I just did this to save us a little time. Um, and as you say, it says any builds A300, S600, it'll say nothing and nothing will be up here. I'll put this on 31 left, I'll show you why in a minute. Um, so here we are on the panel. Uh, so this is what I was talking about, multiple panels. I think the actual motto is FSI Panel 2020 for Microsoft Flight Simulator, simulator Train Like a Real Pilot. And that's because in the simulator, we don't have much time on the simulator, it's very expensive. So on a recurrent training, they'll beam us back and forth. They'll take snapshots, you can do all that, uh, take snapshots, load snapshots. Uh, to put you on final base downwind to get you multiple approaches as quickly as possible. So that's the that's for the multiple approaches. You can do failures. This one only has a couple of these things, but on those those aircraft I mentioned, the Phoenix, the PMDG 73 Fleet, and the Leonardo, you can there's dozens of failures that you can pre-program. You can define when you say I just showed you put yourself on final. You can decide, decide what that is. Let's say downwind you want to be a f lateral offset of six miles and 2,500 feet, that's that. So when you select downwind, you'd have to be on the runway with the engines running, by the way. Um, but there's a whole instructional video on that on his website. Uh, you just click downwind, that's where it would put you, six miles, 2,500 feet. So that's the failures, position, setup, very cool. So what I did before you came on here is uh, I select statue miles and pounds right here this is really cool don't forget to do this it's cockpit flow so it's a two-man airplane that we fly as solo right so you need help especially in a uh, that's in type situation or something like this you're, you're, you're test saturated so this will help you it will do flows so watch this um, do you want to set a keyboard keys combination instead of a joystick no, I'm gonna set joystick so no I'm gonna go to my hostess and I'm gonna set my F2 uh, my trigger key on my hostess whatever lights up you click it so number one lit up, you click it. Uh, these are the checklists that you'll do. So if you want a before start, after start, taxi, um, you can actually put, don't forget to select these. So lineup flow, you want the landing lights on, packs on. After start, you want flaps 15, uh, flaps 15, 20 on this airplane is usually short field stuff. Uh, so 15, 15 is what I selected. So that'll before start, after start, stuff like that. Um, anyway, we'll get back to that, but don't forget to do that one. Um, next thing on the setup, 
a landing report after you land shut down at the gate everything's done you can see how bad your landing was gives you sync great grade your landing sort of like Belanta um, mad dog you can set whatever flaps you want on those particular aircraft fly-by-wire for, for a short final so for a short final um, for you could say okay for the uh, Phoenix I want low brakes and flaps full I want the after landing checklist to go uh, when you bring the speed brakes up and set manage speed on final you could so you get to choose but we're not doing that we're actually doing others these are the ones you consider that the, the, the comms will work for any aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator Premium plus these these are aircraft that will do a little more uh, so we're in the A300-S600 if you if you click that after landing you track the speed brakes they'll do the after landing check and with the trigger the flows you can do other checklists so it's like having a co-pilot uh, beta it's a beta in the MCDU to set the MCDU like the uh, Phoenix the PMDG and the Mad Dog I haven't downloaded that little uh, computer language yet to put it in there I'm not going to bother with that but I'll set up my own MCDU but I, I've selected low and flaps 3040 for pattern work doesn't matter for here because we're just going to do a scenario I right, do that what I did is I went to scenarios the first time you ever sign on you can see this nothing you want help with the frequencies please do yes so that'll auto-tune the next frequency on the comm so they give you a frequency change you look down it's auto-tuned um, enable push to talk yeah that's like that sim which button you want to use uh, okay I'll use my yoke and I'm gonna use my mic button whatever one lights up you click it you have assigned you now have a push to talk, talk button just like that sim say again button comes in handy right I'm gonna use my uh, hostage stick f2 key whatever one lights up up oh, two did click it so now I have a say again button which means they'll repeat the last instructions uh, audio setup for ATC only text don't know why I do that but um, only voice that's realistic right voice and text um, that's pretty cool um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on uh, you could use the only voice and say again button to be more realistic I'm gonna do voice and text because we're doing a video don't test the volume it's it's too loud uh, open the scenario manager now you pick your aircraft if you're flying one of these, it's got everything. G uh, FMS loading, all that stuff. Malfunctions, failures. We're not going to do that. We're going to go generic because we don't, not, our aircraft's not listed there. Anything in green has already been downloaded. I've done a bunch of these for the Mad Dog and a few for the uh, Airbus. So you can see the ones I've done. These level of difficulties, that's how hard they are. Today, we're going to do an easy one. We're going to do JetBlue, well, supposedly easy, uh, JetBlue 1318 JFK to Boston on a charter flight we're taking up excess passengers and cargo for JetBlue um, and you can see then you would download the scenario it's already in green I've done it and once it's downloaded it will say whether preset installed and scenario added to your database I'll show you that in a minute now once you've done that um, JetBlue click on it you can open a lesson plan and read about it lesson plan opens and you can take as much as, as little as you want but there's some critical information you got to get out there you have to set this up properly so this is JetBlue flight 1318 New York to Boston uh, short flight from JFK to Boston initial setup very important JFK 31 left terminal 5 gates 20 to 30 now on a Sobo it's not going to say D30 to 20 you kind of have he's going to show you a map you'll see I think it's gate a 26 or a 27 it's it's different but uh so you got to be careful on that his little map will show you where to look for it but it might not say d20 I have the any builds package which slows down so I got rid of that reinstalled the Sobo JFK package um, so now the gates instead of saying d20 like they did on the any builds it says a 26 but I'll show you how to do that and then when you go to the weather on the initial page you set up uh, FSI JetBlue 1318 show you that uh, this is it. I write down all this stuff, guys. I write down the clearance, the weather, which is what the ATIS is going to say. Anytime you do ATIS in uh, FSI panels, 2345. And this is the procedure. Start uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator in JFK after you do all this. And parking stand, one of these. And make sure your aircraft is powered. Start FSI panel. Now, jump ahead to pre-flight if you don't want to hear this. I'm going to give you all the cheats. Um, it requires you to switch frequencies. You can use your Say Again button. Uh, if you if, if you want FSI panel to automatically set the next freak on standby, tick the box. I don't know what that is. Something's moving out there. So take a look at the shape of this terminal. 
that's terminal five. it's not going to say that on a sobo. so take a look at the shape you're going to put yourself right about in there. it's important because of the pushback instructions. i'm going to push back nose to left delta alpha oh bravo hold short of ah juliet and eventually across the runway at juliet and they're going to looks like an intersection takeoff on yankee is what it looks like ah and there's your taxi instructions right there. i wrote them all down. so here's my cheat sheet for the jet jet blue. it's pretty much got everything in here written down that's what we do we brief everything ah at the gate on the short flight takeoff taxi sid arrival star landing and um taxi in we brief it ahead of time just too busy ah initial climb clearance is five thousand the departure is called the kennedy five for runway thirty one left ah this is pre-brief in one of these scenarios there's a little problem with the box on the ah a three hundred i'm going to have to show you the way you load it's kind of tricky normally it's not tricky but you have to because usually you put in the jfk five canarsie climb and it does this for you but the canarsie climb is basically nav over canarsie the vor out the one seventy six there's a couple of out or aboves or turn within but if you're hitting nav it's going to be well within all that stuff he says anticipate the left turn to intercept the canarsie one seventy canarsie one seventy six radial avoid flying west of it yep and uh... one point five miles before canarsie turn left on the heading one point five intercept the radio is cleared um, expect radar vectors to join the roebuck arrival we'll look at that here's the star on the ilus the two two seven four is going to get in the way we're going to have to sidestep the two two right and uh, turn off the autopilot the flight directors and land and then uh, you're going to vacate to the right contact ground and i wrote down all these frequencies although they're going to be auto tuned for you remember every atus is 2345 all right so that's that and then er error downloaded the lesson plan okay it's okay and then we come in here we've what reviewed the lesson plan i'm sorry i'm sorry and right here and we simply flight plan we open that Let's just get this like this. I'll bring this over so you can see it. I've already done it, guys. But when you uh, do it, let me bring this over. Come on, cooperate with me, please, my friend, please. It's not really cooperating, so there we go. There we go. Uh, generate flight. You put in, uh, this was what will pop up. But the important part is, even though you've gone sim brief in, in JP's flight plan, yeah, the route's correct. You've got to be careful because sometimes the runways aren't correct. So you have to put in uh, 31 left and 22 left. So I'm going to uh, put in the aircraft type, A300. I've already done this, but I'm going to show you how I did it. A300. That's 600, bravo. Default, we're going to do the any builds. There we go. Everything else is correct. Everything's correct. But down here, departure runway 31 left and arrival runway 22 left and star it find the route and there we go merit roebuck that's it so make sure this matches what was on your lesson plan which is right up here so that's the that's important make sure your sim brief flight plan matches what's on the lesson plan from fsip okay but we're not going to use this because we've already done it and uh, here it is and here's the uh, pdf okay that's what we did before we ever signed on. So I'm going to close this out and uh, do that. And I'm going to go inside the airplane and get us started. Hmm. Here we go. Cold dark airplane. I'm going to come in here on the bag, my flight. First thing I'm going to do is get my sim brief flight plan onto the EFB. There it is. Uh, there's the EFB, there's the flight plan. I also have a hard copy of my Navigraph account uh, and everything else. Um, I'm going to come in here this, and I'm going to go to the next one, ground equipment. I have the ground power units in there toggled. Okay, that looks good. Come back in. I'm just going across the top. Weight and balance, import from Simbrief. Once it's in there, course check it, looks good. Apply load to the aircraft. Come back. What's next? Performance, skip that. Aircraft maintenance. I'd service anything, uh, 94%, 100%, anything that needed to be serviced, you could do fuel panel because we're about to fuel. Okay, so back in here, and Navigraph, we're going to go JFK, airport, and uh, airport, and airport diagram. And here we are. We're at that gates 20 to 30, and that's the correct one. 
Um, so you can see that, see the shape of that terminal. It's important because it gets a little tricky there. That's an graph coming across, settings, don't have to do anything. Throttle cal cal calibration, don't bother. Okay, um, so let's come back in here now. Let's go up front. Let's do the origination pre-flight. Again, if you don't want to see this, go right to take off and taxi. Um, I will be booting up FSI panel and get the comm started for uh, taxi pushback. So you, you can go there if you want. All right, so uh, this airplane, a little bit of the history of this airplane, as you might know, my typewriting is in the A310. I went to Toulouse to get it. Yet American Airlines had A300-600. This is an A310. It's a stretch A310. A300 came out in the 70s, and that was a three-person cockpit. Um, A310 made it a two-person cockpit. They essentially put the uh, flight engineer panel here and on the overhead. That's why the overhead panel has so many buttons. Uh, next generation Airbus is, of course, super clean. Um, but So anyway, small cockpit for a big airplane. There's probably some jokes there that I've talked about. But anyway, we call this the rack. Because when you sat here for, like, I say, a three-man crew flight to Europe, um, it was tight. This is a medium-range airplane. It's a great cargo airplane now, but uh, it was not a long-range airplane. I'm on the TFDI MD-11 development team. <clears throat> that thing's going to be awesome. Um, right now it's March 14th, 2024. I would guess a couple of months it'll be out with everything you can imagine. It's going to be great. That's a long-range. This is a short-range, also an awesome airplane. Um, so the breakers were all in. We look for the... Uh, Life vest, crash axe, halon fire extinguisher in the green band, light, spare light bulbs, windshield wiper fluid, which is deactivated on most aircraft. The pressure breathing equipment's back there somewhere. We check the, um, by the way, if you have the any builds Kennedy package, this is not going to work. you got to get rid of it and put the Sobo back in. You'll, you'll never make it through this profile. It stutters. Uh, ropes are on. The windows are closed on both sides. Rope. Windows, all's good. In the middle, get rid of the uh, armrest. All right, radar is off. Fuel glow is cut off. Par breaks apart because the chalks are on. Throttles are idle. Spoil levers down. Flap levers up. Gear handles down. Wipers are off. And uh, let me get you a better view so that you don't have to strain. And at that point, you go battery switches. But before you put power on, we're going to put the nav lights on, right? So battery switches on. That's all good. And then you're going to go external power. Available means it's it's checked the volts and freaks. So you can turn that on. Get the coffee started. Get to the overhead. Turn on the 3R to use. Turn off the HFs. We're not going over water. We are use. We get the 10 minutes type cycle started. Go to the box. Go to menu. Go to A cars. Sim brief. It's in there. Align the IRS. And that's really all you have to do right now. Let's do the overhead and we'll get started. Now, I'm not going to board the people, I'm going to request refueling first because they won't board if you're is on its way. So kind of refueling truck is on the way and I'm going to go to the overhead start and we're going to do the five columns you guys probably know again you can go right to taxi if you know all this uh, so it's aligning in its 10 minute mode we you got the coordinates in all these lights are normal all normal hydraulics all in the green I go to bright at all times at least at daylight. Uh, no smoking's on, seatbelt signs off. All the way up top. Cockpit doors, channels. This is, uh, if you had wanted to check before you ever turned on the battery, the battery power, you could have checked your bolts and freaks. Right? Don't need to do that. Uh, we'll start the fire test. A squid. The truth is, I do believe if you do that, uh, no, you don't get uh, any kind of squid, squib light. And then we're going to do the fire test. Just press and hold it. Loop A. 
Blue B, you get the fire, the fire handle and the light. E cam message. Press off the master warning, silences the bell. After a little while, the message goes away. Fire lights go out. Handle goes out. All right, electrical panel's all good, checked. Emergency power is on, galley power is on, IDG, no lights. We can do the yard dampers and the auto throttles, uh, but not the pitch trim to the IRUs aligned. We've got the position lights on, everything else is off, all the way up top. Yeah. Voice recorder circuit breaker checks in the green, four bumps is four channels. This is your uh, backup landing gear, so if you got a, a bad indication on your landing gear, uh, knock down and lock, but you went to the overhead uh, and that was green, you would know that it was just an indicator. You have to have both of them confirm it to have a bad one. Uh, usually you have data in here for eight cars, this is the number three VHF, fully working VHF. You can use it for anything. Squib test on the APU, fire test on the APU, and uh, it's 27 degrees Celsius out there, so we're going to start the APU as well. Good fire test. Master warning, punch it off, bell goes off. Okay, and once the light goes out. Now, if you didn't have AC power on the aircraft, you'd have to get the fuel pump override. But you do have AC power, so turn on the inner tank pump number two. Start the switch. I really like this product. It's any build, uh, 300 to 600. I'm um, having all the time on the airplane. It's been a little trip down memory lane. All right, fuel panel, it's fueling up nicely. Uh, engine emissions off, it's starting. Wipers, we talked about that, that's off. Uh, cockpit door, make sure it's normal. Uh, all the vents and smoke elimination, exhaust vent overboard, uh, ground cooling, cargo valve. Just kind of slow, you get into this with smoke elimination. Uh, one more fire test for you guys. One squib, second loop. You get the light. Check the panel. It's good. Click the master warning. Go back to the overhead. And you wait for the light to go out. And they're just going to go to loop. There we go. It's off. There we go. In the green on the oxygen, cargo compartment, smoke, no go lights. Uh, window heats on, probe heats off until after engine start. Uh, right here, you can make sure it's not manual, it's an auto. Uh, right here, it's one or system one or two. I use, uh, most airlines use captain's flying one, FO's flying two, because that's the most likely to switch back and forth instead of odd number, even number, home base, away base. That way you, you alternate the, uh, all the primary and the standby, uh, which switches automatically pressurization. Upper right, still aligning. Notice that, packs are all set. Uh, Temperatures here, if you want to find out what the temperature is, right? There's two ways here. You can go down to the e camp. It looks like it's 25 Celsius. Let's get some cooling air on here before we load. Once we get that on, and down here, I'm going to go. Emergency lights on. Test the enunciators. Check there. Check everywhere. Any burnt out lights, we have to come out and uh, change them. Don't change them. Um, all right, so we got that going. Without further ado, let's go in here and get the people boarding. I, I definitely wait until the fueling truck arrives. Sometimes the GSX gets messed up. So much for the jet bridge, right? I guess we'll be using the stairs. Um, I didn't know that. Down to 20. Okay, so we're um, still lining. Close gonna open forward cargo, but it's gonna do that by itself. I'm gonna turn on the lights, we check our oxygen, press here, gonna yellow flow, uh, put the mask on, tech to mic. But since COVID, we don't do a lot of that anymore. Uh, bugs, no one wanna flags in the PFD. A tends the engine out. You press B on the uh, keyboard to get the altimeters to set. 3027, remember I copied down everything. 3027, A10 engine out. Set that on the uh, orange bug. I can blow both cables. Uh, clock set, cross check with the other one. You can reset it here. Make sure it matches with the A cars. Gauge the uh, standby attitude indicator. Field elevation is 13. All three altimeters are good 70 feet within each other, for each other. 
uh, takeoff uh, landing altitudes here, but we usually set takeoff altitude in case we come back on a uh, for an emergency. We'll do the uh, panel here in a little while. Back in here, down. Uh, we'll set the box up in a minute. Once again, down, up, idle, cut off, off. Trim is zero, zero. We'll check the top of the yoke for zero. And we'll check the uh, ultimate gear extension. Everything is all set. All right, so they're starting to board. Uh, once you do that, let's go to the box. Get the rest of the set now. This isn't rocket science, but they make it rocket science on this one. I'll show what I mean. So the cost index is 83. 83. Get rid of all these messages. 83. And we are JBU 13 and 18. There we go. That's correct. Next page. Fuel. Yep, we need it. Uh, 23.6, 27. And uh, taxi fuel is 2.2. And uh, it looks like they applied the weights and balances yet. Come back over here. Weight and balance. Apply loads of the aircraft. And fueling is complete. That's good. Usually that loads up. Uh, zero fuel weight is 233.3. Checks, electronic flight bag back over there. Zero view weight is 27.2. And now here we go. You ready? This is not rocket science, but they kind of make it rocket science. All right, so you should be able to do this. You should be able to go SID. JFK, and then we should get a transition of Canarsie. We don't have that. So we should be able to go insert this Canarsie. But after Canarsie, we want to go to Canarsie, CRI, 176. I'm going to put in a random point out there, 25. And this, oh, it made a liar out of me. It worked. It worked. So there it is. That's the Canarsie climb. Now let me show it to you. Runway heading, so I'll be able to use nav. Now, anytime I do that, I made a flyer out of me because that would work great. Um, let me go back to the uh, auto quadrant here. Go up, roll you in. And before I do that, it's kind of close to me to go via walk and back it up to broad data. Because anytime you enter a home built point like that, you've got to have it backed up manually. Because to the database, you know, home built, you do. This is never right on. 112, 3, 176. 176, wow. This is going to be publishable because that's the best I ever did on that. I was finished loading the box. That's the Canarsie climb. 31 left. And uh, go down to Merritt. Merritt. Star. ILS-22 left, Merit, Roebuck, Merit transition, and insert it. Let's see how it looks. There it is, Roebuck 3, Merit, Roebuck 3, all the way in, and the altitudes are there. We'll check those later. Let's go to takeoff, electronic flight bag. You can hear the boarding back there. Performance. Runway. 31 left. I would expect this is going to be a flex takeoff. Uh, wind. I remember I wrote it all down. I'll do the 80s here in a second. It is 218 and 25 degrees. 200 at 18. And 25 degrees Celsius. And the altimeters 3027. 3027. Wait. It is 254.9. So it's 254.853. 254.853. Uh, 
254-8582. What I like is you can either use their keyboard or the one at home. Top 15, 15 is what we want. Uh, air conditions on, anti soft, pretty long runway. Tow this. Force tow gun. Nope, I'm not going to do that. Calculate. And uh, let's get some brightness on here, guys. All right, I can see that. All right, let's get rid of that. Okay. And the 63 is flex tab. And then it says 54, 54, 59. 54, 54, 59. And it's 1.1 up. 54, 54, 59. 1, 54. 1, 54. And I'm going to leave the 1500 pre press reduction, 1500 cell. And uh, 54, 54, 59. And it should be aligned by now. So I go back up to the overhead and I'll turn on the pitch trim now. Get rid of the external power. And that all looks good. 54, 54, 59. Set 250. Why is that going, guys? Let me also go down here, flex tap 63. I didn't have an altitude selected. Airplane's obviously smarter than me. 250. So let's go across the Versio control panel. That's the last thing we had to set, right? It's, uh, I'm going to use constraints. So I get the time and distance there. I'm going to use airports. Uh, I've got 810 engine out. I'm not going to put it into decision altitude. 5,000. We're only heading 314. We'll use nav on departure 400 feet. Everything is set. Go down here. Bolt cargo is still open. Maybe that's closing. I'm not sure why. So we're all boarded. Let's do this. And uh, prepare for pushback. Let's see if they can get everything closed up. There they all closed up. Hey, the slide's been an arm one time. And uh, it's because they blew the slide. I didn't even know how I did that. So. All right, so now you've got it all set. You're all loaded. You're all happy. Start up MSI panel. You could have done it as soon as you were powering the aircraft, but think of this as start the comp panel. We are ready for pushback. Start FSI panel. I'm going to start the profile, which essentially is activating airline flight. It's activating the one that the compact is going to go. Uh, disable all failures. Don't need to do that. Start training. Here we go. Now, if you were in the Phoenix or the uh, PMDG or even some Airbus. Uh, and you did this at the uh, departure checks completed. Mad Dog Bypass pin inserted. At times, it'll load. You don't even do the pre-flight. It loads everything up for you. Gets it ready. Pretty cool. I did it on the Mad Dog. Um, not on this one yet. Not on this one yet. All right. Now is this? You can see eight is available. Twenty-three forty-five. So we come down to the uh, throttle quadrant, and we go zoom on in. So we're all there. Twenty-three forty-five. Remember, that's the ATIS frequency on FSI panel for everything. All the rest of the frequencies are, uh, are very consistent here. With, the, um, with the charts. Here we Wind go. 200, zero, zero, 18 knots, visibility 10, cloud view 3,500 feet, temperature 25 dew point, 
This is Kennedy Airport Information Charlie, wind 200, 18 knots, visibility 10, cloud view 3,500 feet, temperature 252.22, altimeter 3027, departing runway 31 left, landing runway 22 left, advise on initial contact you have information Charlie. Charlie, so I'm going to put guard over here, it is back up here, so frequency 3505, I'm going to have it selected. Right, uh, okay, and uh, let's see, we can get our clearance now, that was the frequency, and Kennedy clearance, this is JetBlue 1318 at gate Delta 20, uh, information Charlie, request clearance to Boston. JetBlue 1318, good morning, clear Boston's file, 31 left, Kennedy 5 departure from RC, climb maintain 5000 feet, expect flight level 210, 10 minutes after departure, squawk 2256. Hey, good morning. Uh, JetBlue 1318, cleared to Boston, has filed uh, runway 31 left, Kennedy 5 departure, Canarsie climb, climb maintain 5,000, expect 210, 10 minutes after departure, squawk 2256. JetBlue 1318, readback is correct. When ready for pushback, contact ground 1219er. Okay, ready for pushback, 219 for JetBlue 1318. And I uh, look at this, they're going to put 219 over there for me in a minute. 2256, I think they said. No? I think I better get an angle I can see this a little better. I know this is a long way around. Thanks for not mentioning that. Two five six T A R A. All right. So now, remember that trigger flow. I'm going to click my trigger on my uh, oscilloscope and go before start. Go to the overhead. See what they do. You see all the fuel pumps come on. I'm not doing anything here. The beacon was turned on. The seatbelt sign was turned on. All right. Very good. Very very good. And uh, the other thing we have to do is I have to go electronic flight bag. I'm going to turn, I saw external powers on there. Ground equipment, ground power unit, toggle the shocks, put on the parking brakes. And I did. Parking brakes are set. Okay, and uh, last thing I do is I check the slides are all armed and the status page. And uh, that's normal. And I go over here. And I go electronic flight bag. Look it up here. My flight checklist. Make sure that our, our system got everything normal and on. And the uh, it's, and it's going to check that. Beacon's on. Parking brakes are as required. Pitch trim after start. We'll do that. Okay, so we're good to go. And make sure. Checklist 1318 ground. Good morning. Push and start approved, facing east, report ready for taxi. Jeff Blue, 1380, push and start uh, facing east, report ready for taxi. They had already done that when I clicked the mic, they started talking. Um, I you know, that's because I shouldn't have clicked the mic. All right, so I'm going to come here, GSX, continue the pushback. Nose left. Release parking brakes, please. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. Okay. Good to start. We're going to come up here. Um, we're going to go crank A. I'm flying. And we're going to go start number two first. Start valve open. We'll check that closed at 45%. Come on down. Is the oil pressure rising? On 25 seconds to get ignition. Is a good ignition. I'm going to look for 2468. So around 20% is the 2, around 400 is the EGT, and around 60 is the N2. The reason we look check that sometimes it tells you if your throttles are idle. So it's a good habit uh, to check it because if you see up here three, you know that your throttle probably isn't at idle uh, or you're stuck in light idle. 
like to put the engine ice on, the flaps up. Uh, two, four, six, and eight. The eight is that it drank some oil there. That's all. 45% start valve closed. Looks like a good pushback. And uh, start valve was closed. So we can start the number one engine. Start valve open. And we actually go over here and check the pressure when we open the start valve. Forgot to mention that. All right, 15% max motoring. We'll get the max motoring down here. Keeps it a little cooler. I also check on below 100. Please set parking brakes. Waiting your confirmation for a good engine start. All right, we've got good oil pressure. It's coming up. I'll tell them we have a good engine start. Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine start. Please disconnect. All right, so we're looking for 2468 and engine ice. So we're above 10, no visible moisture, so we don't need to turn on any engine ice. So two, so around 20, around 400 when it comes back, and around 60, and eight is it had an oil gulp. Uh, 2468, everything looks good, everything's in the green. Now I'm gonna do our little tricky thing, but I'm gonna have you guys watch it when I do it. Here we go. Unlocking gear. I guess I gotta be facing forward when I do that, huh? After start. So what are we gonna do after start when I click this, right? I'm gonna shut down the APU, lower the flaps 15, 15. Let's check it out. Tow truck disconnected, bypass pin removed. The APU shut down, Left is clear, right is clear. And remember now we can turn on the pro beam. It doesn't do that for you. you gotta remember to do that. Flaps coming to 15, 15. How's that? Pretty cool, huh? Um, I'm gonna go to flight controls. I'm going to go this way to get to that. Uh -huh. we'll check the rudders. Hold on to those with the steering while I do it. We'll check the elevators. And uh, check the ailerons. I'm going to go outside and see if they're out there for a salute. There they are. I'll come in, I'll flash my taxi light. Nod my head. <laughs> Such a comedian. Um, all right, flash my taxi light, goes light. There you go, now leave it on. Turn the flash them to get rid of them. Doesn't sound right. Um, and, uh, okay. JetBlue 1318, taxi. JetBlue 1318, taxi, Delta Alpha, Bravo, hold short of Juliet. Got the Alpha Bravo short of Juliet Delta 1318. All right, I should have done the uh, checklist before I did that for taxi. Just I know they did it, but um, after start checklist, pitch trim, butter trim, spoilers are armed. They had spoilers they armed for me. Um, they did. Make sure. Yeah, they did. Very cool. Very cool. Nice job, uh, automated FO. Uh, after start, heat cam status checked. Um, down here. Check it. It's normal. And I should have left this in the engine. And take off the fig. Normal to take off. Normal. Okay, that takes uh, trim, spoilers, flaps, everything. Um, doors. And the ice hand signal, we got that. Okay, good. Uh, transponder is set. We got that. Auto brakes max. It should have already been set. Uh, you know what we can do is let's do this. Face forward while I do it. And it breaks it off, so let's go. Start taxi procedures. You can see the auto brakes came on there. Take off test normal. We're doing all that stuff. Jeff Blue 1318 taxi. Oh, uh, here it gives taxi. So here we go. Sorry about that, guys. Jeff Blue, pay attention. Uh, so 
we go to the airport diagram. Here we are, Delta Alpha. Here's our second left, it looks like. Second left. I just know about this little marker that tells you where your throttle's going to go up to. Right? So if I push that up, that little, that tells you. You guys know that, though. Yeah, I'm not the, uh, I took a lot of time in this airplane, but uh, I really just started flying it. I spent most of my time over doing unlisted videos for TFDI. Next left is Delta Alpha, then it's going to be a right on Bravo, all the way around, hold short of Juliet. We'll do the rest of the checklist when we get out of the taxi right? So we're not heads down. I gotta tell you, that any builds, beautiful scenery for Kennedy, but I couldn't even taxi with it. It was stuttering so badly, so this is much better. I have to remember that. And I have the same thing for London when I was doing the uh, Cross the Pond eastbound. I went from JFK to London, and uh, when I got into the London zone, the any builds feature throws my airplane up. And I had to terminate after flying all the way across the pond in the uh, across the pond of Nets in the event. And on base leg, the controller, I said, I have no control of my airplane. I got to check off. Uh, he was not impressed. Not impressed at all. Okay, all the way around to uh, Juliet, guys. So here we are. Juliet's way over here. And then I'll hold short. Get you right at Juliet. Bravo. All right, so the takeoff, we're going to set 40%, and then we're going to uh, toga, which is here. Of course, in real life, it's there. But we're not in real life, so we'll use that. Whoa. That wasn't very realistic either. Um, don't forget to subscribe, guys. I, I really could use the help. I'm having a blast doing this, and uh, sometimes you know, only about 10% of the people who watch subscribe. I understand, but it uh, helps me. Uh, just for ego, and to be honest with you, or just because I'm kind of mentoring a bunch of guys, it gives me a little bit of credibility. Um, like it if you like it, that, 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 that's fun for my tracking. Uh, truth is, I'm already at 1,875 subscribers, which I just started about 10 months ago, really. I'm already getting YouTube compensation. I am in the payment program. I've made $125. After tax, it's about $82. Um, so, you know, it's not much money for the amount of work I've put in, especially the TFDI, I'm doing it all for free. I'm an unpaid intern. It has nothing to do with money. As a matter of fact, when I get enough money, I'm going to roll the money over and on my Discord channel and uh, my first paycheck I get, and uh, I'll give them a credit or I'll buy them. Maybe the MB11 for TFDI, I'll buy them a membership for that. Uh, so, I'm really not in it to make the money having an absolute blast with it, though. Absolute blast. Alright, we're going to take a right here at Bravo. I'm sorry, I'll hold you. Not right at Bravo. we got to hold short Juliet at the end, and we're going to take a left. Wait for clearance to cross the runway. So, uh, yeah, uh, 40%. That's how we're going to do the takeoff. 40%. And then we'll toga, make sure takeoff power is set. Thrust blue will appear down here at about 80 knots. That means we're in clamp mode. The throttles aren't going to move automatically anymore. At 400 feet, we'll go nav, which will take us on the Canarsie climb. We'll have to monitor raw data. We can do it one of two ways. We can do it on our needles or with the rose mode. Our needles are fine. At 800 feet, we'll make sure that we uh, get into climb power. I'll just go auto, get into climb power. And I'm going to go level change, well, level change at 800 feet. Speed select level change. That will give us a uh, clean up. Get us all cleaned up. I'll probably get in perf mode somewhere. JetBlue 1318, hold short of Juliet. Contact tower 123 decimal 9, safe flight. JetBlue 1318, hold short of Juliet. Uh, tower 239. All right, so this is Juliet up here, so I got to hold short. 
Tower, JetBlue 1318, uh, Bravo Short Oak, no, uh, Juliet. JetBlue 1318, cross 22 right via Juliet, from short 31 left, intersection Yankee. Okay, JetBlue 1318, cross 22 right via Juliet, a little short of 31 left, intersection Yankee. So, intersection Yankee's about a thousand feet up the runway. So we're going to have to make sure we have data for that. It's probably going to be the same runway so long. So clear left and right. It's good. Clear to cross. Before we do anything else, we'll go on to our EFB. Bump it up a thousand feet. Clear. We we did that. Our TPS would have data for that. All right, this is Yankee right here. Short at Yankee. Final is clear. Isn't that great? The uh, you see something here, guys. We go here. Up. Go here. Taxi procedures. We did all that. Take off test normal. Yep, we already did that. So we have the data intersection we look at our TPS normally there's a thing you can bump it up a thousand but we're well below that it would say uh, 31 left and then go down a couple and say section Yankee make sure the bugs are the same which they always are Left, Jeff Blue 1318. Line up and wait. Line up flow. The line up flow, they're putting on the lights. There they all go. I like to get them on now. Lights, chime, flight attendants prepare for takeoff. And I ding them now. I ding them just by uh, cycling the uh, no smoking sign. All right, lights are all on. Line up and Here we go. Jeff 1318, winds 200 at 15, runway 31 left, clear for takeoff. Jeff 1318, clear for takeoff 31 left. For whatever reason, it doesn't want to move, I guess I don't have enough power here. Clear for takeoff.
then it will rose to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. It's 400 feet. Here's a thousand feet. We can go climb power, go auto. Climb power set. Flaps up. Somehow this got into approach mode and not. Um, JetBlue 1318, contact departure. 135.9. Good day. 35.9. Good day to you, sir. Uh, JetBlue 1318. And 35.9, there it is. Departure JetBlue 1318s out of 3,000 for 5,000. JetBlue 1318, identified. Maintain 5,000 feet. Continue radio 176. Charlie, Romeo, India. JetBlue 1318, maintain 5,000. Continue radio 176. All right, guys, so I'm in nav, but I got raw data backing it up. Flaps up, gears up. Here, have to take off flow. Four five should be tracking up on the one seventy six on our seat. Go back to map. Yep, there it is. Back to rows, and there it is. I get the heading bug over here just to. Uh, in the ballpark. Pretty cool, huh? Proud of myself. So, uh, here we are. Gears up, flaps up, spoilers disarmed. I have to take off the checklist. is complete. And, uh, clear on this. And continuous relights not necessary anymore. Take that off. I don't know what the airlines, what the, any airlines particular thing is. We... We did continuous relight on takeoff, I believe. I don't have the old manuals for the Airbus. I have the MD-11, TFDI, I have Super 80, I have my 7675, I have my 777. Uh, I don't have my old Airbus manuals. I wish I did. Tracking outbound on the uh, 176 radio. You see, required to back it up with raw data, but raw data, this does count for raw data. So we can go map mode now. Remember, I only put in 25 miles, so that's the end of it. So if we don't get radar vectors from there, I'll have to do it heading select the track and go back to raw data here. Yeah, so this, the tail of the um, bearing pointer does count for uh, raw data. You can see it's a little bit off, though. It's saying uh, we are on the 176. It's saying we're on the one. 65. You can see we're pretty much on it, so it's doing a good job. Usually you don't go this far. Get ready here. Jet Blue 1318, climb 11,000 feet. Expect left turn shortly. Jet Blue 1318 up to 11,000 feet. All right, 11,000, and we'll just go level change. We could go profile, right? We're no, no uh, speed restrictions, 250 to 11 or 12 or anything like that. So I can go profile. I'll do profile. That way at 10,000 it accelerates to cruise uh, climb speed above 10. How do you like that uh, checklist thing? Isn't that cool where the flows, you get to program that? So if you haven't done that, do it. Yeah, I, as I recommend it, I'm a big fan of this FSI panel. I'm having a blast with it. Um, I was doing a lot of VAT sim on the 777 over on PMDG. Um, but you know, you can't do engine out work. You can't do holding. We can, but you know, it kind of disrupts everyone else. Um, this one, you, you get to practice all that. Sometimes pop-up scenarios, diversions, medical diversions. Now he's got this thing where hit him being a JP. Where um, see, if I, if I hit that point at 25 miles, I'll have to go heading because it's gonna not know where we're going. Uh, autopilot may trip off. It's supposed to not trip off. You just go to heading select, uh, heading hold. 
Uh, Jet Blue, one three one eight, turn left, zero two zero, climb fifteen thousand feet. Turn left heading zero two zero, climb to one five thousand feet for Jet Blue, thirteen eighteen. All right, here we go, zero two zero, heading select. So now we're in heading select, climbing to fifteen. So we're in profile and heading. Beautiful. That worked out great. So twenty-five miles worked pretty good, guys. Let me see. I gotta go. I might go to the box and start thinking about what we're gonna do next. Probably gonna be direct to merit. Direct to merit. I'm just gonna put that in to get rid of the discontinuity out right here. Direct merit. I'm not going to go nav yet because we're not clear of that, right? All right, accelerating up to 325 on our way to Boston. Yeah, best $50 I ever spent was this program, and, uh, especially for making videos. Now, I have like 30 videos over on the MD-11 for TFDI that I can't show because of the non-disclosure act. I made them for this thing called Collector's Edition 1000 guys. They're guys who bought it early editions, and they get to fly it, write up bugs that they find, and... I did it for them. I also developed all the checklists, no procedures, pre-flight, FMS checklists, emergency checklists that are probably going to be used by them. Um, they are actually in their final mode. They went from alpha phase, beta phase, now they're final. They work pretty good. They did a lot of work over there, but um, that's why I'm asking for you to subscribe when I could have a chance to Check get over there. Check through 1318, contact New York Center, 125.325. One two five three two five. Give it a second. One two five three two five. And that is uh, New York Center. New York Center JetBlue thirteen eighteen is out of one thirteen point five from one five thousand. And JetBlue thirteen eighteen radar contact. Continue on heading. Climb flight level one nine or zero. Okay, continue on the zero two zero heading and climb the one nine or zero JetBlue thirteen eighteen. All right, zero two zero heading and uh, climbing to nineteen. Come on. The status page is always good to check. No problem. Just in case anything's wrong. I would start setting up now. A pretty short flight for uh, the arrival. All right, if you're not doing something. What? Yeah, forgetting something. Forgetting to do something. Star. Robot. It's Ruiz at between 21 and 23. So uh, Ruiz between 21 and 23. Ruiz 21 and 20. This is 23. I don't think we're going to make it all the way up to 35. Um, and then we got all in at above 17, and uh, all in above 17. I'm just cross-checking this against the JetBlue 1318. Proceed direct newest. Climb and maintain flight level 210. JetBlue 1318 direct newest. Flight level 210. All right, so out of 18, we're going to go 290 and 210. And direct newest, which was not on our real clearance here. Newest. Newest. Direct to Newest. That's on the other side, so that's interesting. Insert. We go nav. Direct newest. And after newest, it's FEXX. F the newest F E triple X. And then after that, you're going to clear out Merit because we're going to Ruiz. It's this continuity. Yep, Phoenix, Newest, Bex, and Ruiz. All right. 
Yeah, it was a little bit of a curveball. Let me show you why. So we are cleared over Merrick, guys, right out here, and then Ruiz. But so, but he gave us direct Newers, which is really on the JFK transition. Newers. Sorry, so we weren't supposed to go that way. So we were on the Merrick, then then the arrival. So he carried us on Newark, Newers, FedEx, Ruiz. So we had to reprogram it. That's all. And there's 21. So where were we on this uh, thing? All in above 17, Banky above 16, Roebuck 260, 19, 12. All in at 17, Banky at 16, and Roebuck between 19 and 12. Providence 260 and above 11. Providence. Still 260 and above 11. And then Pran at 250 and 12. Pran 250 and 12. It's at or above, right? Cradle 10, Pleb 8. Cradle 10. We'll have eight, and then uh, Ethan five. Ethan five, and Hody at two ten. No, we are we'll get it off after that. We'll run away. Okay. So we're not going to ever make it up to. Uh, 35, which is our original option. We'll see what they do with this. But right now, I'm going to go into the box. I'm going to put a knit. A knit and altitude. I'm going to put in 23. Because I don't want to get confused here. I'm going to start figuring itself out. Because if you remember, Our first one that we're worried about. Now, Ethan, we're getting radar vectors, right? Uh, for two six left. That's why it's a little heading there. Uh, two two left, rather. From Jody track to the Cran, to the club, track to Ethan. Then on track 31 to Petrick, on track to tail. Uh, Petrick tail. Trick tail. All right, beautiful. That's briefed. Um, now we can go into the approach. ILS two six two two left, and uh, I'm going to get that set one ten three and two fifteen. One ten three and two fifteen. Gotta go this way. Ah, uh, long way around. 103, come on. 132 and uh, 215. Long way. One ten three two fifteen. What do we got for minimum? All right, let's set this up here. One ten three two sixteen and two hundred. Two hundred. JetBlue thirteen eighteen. Contact Boston. Approach one twenty decimal six. Up to 13, 18, 120.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6. 20.6.
20.6, and that is busted. Oh, you know what? I don't have the 8 ish yet. Darn it. It's visibility 1 0, cloud view 5,000 feet, temperature 2 4, dew point 1 8, altimeter 3. This is Boston Airport information delta, wind 270, 8 knot. And Boston approach, uh, JetBlue 1318 information delta 21210. JetBlue 1318, Boston approach, good morning. Continue Roebuck 3 arrival, expect ILS 22 left. We'll continue Roebuck 3, we expect 22 left, Jeff Blue 1318. So guys, I think they're going to keep it here at 21, so I'm going to go to a knit. I'm going to put it in 21. That, that lets the box get all stabilized, 21. All right, so you're 110, 3, 215, 200, and 216 on the DH, so uh, I didn't need to do that. <laughs> 200 216 visibility is good 103 information delta winds are uh, uh, 270 at 10 so a little bit of a right cross 10 miles visibility a uh, few at 5,000 25 Celsius 173026 is the ultimate there's no cruise check down a little bit. We'll continue, but we're not clear to do so. And they want us to Effects at 23, but we're below it. That's okay. As long as they're keeping us down here, we're fine. Ruiz is 21 to 23. Uh, after landing, so uh, we go. Let's finish briefing that approach there. Uh, approach. See why you'd want to have this kind of all brief before you got there. Um, missed approach. It's uh, so we got 216 set on the orange bug. And we've got 200 set on the DH. We've got the frequency set 10.3 and 2.15. 10.3, 2.15. So the briefing goes something like this. All right, this will be the ILS 22 left at Boston. 11-3, 24 November 23, 110.3, 2.15. Vocus at uh, 1,700. Going down to 2.16. Uh, radio altimeter is 200. Touchdown zone is 16. Min sector altitude is 2,500, 2,000, 2,500 on the mist. Uh, mist approach is in the box. It's climbed to 3,000 outbound, VOR 216. So a, bit, a little bit of a uh, pretty much straight ahead. And uh, to Winnie and hold. Here's Winnie, be a uh, teardrop entry in the hold. After landing, We are going to clear and hold short of the inboard. Um, we have a dis large displaced threshold. Uh, so let's go with um, brakes medium and uh, flaps. Takeoff approach, 30, 40, going to be about 126. Of course, we could do data over on the electronic play bag if we wanted. It's not necessary to get the box, uh, so we don't have to do that. I guess we can't do it on here, can we? That's cool. I don't know what that is, but all right, good enough. Pretty much ready. Uh, we would actually do a PA to the people. We would have had the seatbelt sign off for a little while, right? I do my uh, automatic checklist. I don't think there's any available for this. No blind of flow after takeoff. Nope, we did all that. This is after landing, shutdown, close. And I'm going to go to uh, EFB. I don't think there's anything here either. Performance by flight. Before takeoff. 
after takeoff we get all that signs set, heat cam, status check, altimeters minimums, ignition, continuous relight for the approach, landing altitude set, and uh, landing altitude is set at zero. And ignition reset continues. All right. Cool. Yeah, this is uh, this is great, guys. So this is a level one. As I mentioned, there's level two, threes, and fours. Um, one of them I did from Marseille to Calvi, France, to the island of Corsica, and um, had circling. Uh, it went pretty well. I did everything great, except I circled to the east, and it says in a note, don't circle to the east. Tough approach. you got to really keep it tight. You'll overshoot a little bit, come in. I was in the Super, I was in the Mad Dog to do that one, and um, JP said, yeah, nice job, uh, really nice, except you weren't supposed to circle to the east. So I'm not sure if you put that one up as an example. Everything else went very well. Um, I went JetBlue, 1318, sent to 12,000 feet when ready. Altimeter is 30.27. Comply with altitude and speed restrictions. JetBlue, 1318, descend to 12,000 when ready, 30.27. Comply with the altitude and speed restrictions. Okay, so... Um, up here, we put in one two thousand, and if we go to profile, right, let's see what it does. Uh, all in, it's supposed to be at twenty one. We're figuring it out. I don't know about that. Coming back up. All in above 17. Nope, above 17. All right, we're good. We're good. Come on, Captain. What a memory. So we got the uh, vertical track uh, ver VTI showing us here. That all looks good. It used to be on the Airbus. Went Prague. And you see, yeah, there it is. Uh, vertical deviation minus 20 feet. But you have the indicator there, too. But that gives you trend information that, as well as that. All right, I make the PA to the people. Tell me on the ground in 20 minutes, and I turn the seatbelt sign on. Pro, uh, star is brief, approach is brief, and uh, taxi is brief. We're good to go. Very cool. Yeah, so uh, right now, uh, JP and the FSI panel team, which might just be him, I don't know, are there. You're integrating this new program where, uh, remember, this 260 restriction I'm going to have to be careful about. Where does that start? where you can choose options. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, Roebuck. Roebuck at 260 at, at 19. So it's sending down 19 at Roebuck at 260 at 19. Banky above uh, 17, 16 will be well above that. And then Roebuck 19 so it's 260 below 19 no violation today yeah so evidently um, you, you download and you can actually choose options they'll give you a choice you divert you go I'm not sure what it is yet but right now it's just computer code that you download and update into your program I'm not good with that stuff so I got a little nervous so I didn't do it here we go We're slowing down to two uh, 60, and we got between 9 and 19 and 12. We're looking good. And we're below 16, so altimeters are set. And uh, I'm going to turn on the lights. They're all on. I turn everything on for this stuff, guys. Be as visible as possible. Not that it helps a lot, but it does help. All right, so we're flying along with the... Uh, Vertical track. So it's having a little trouble being at 260. Might want to help it just a little bit. Stay at 260. This robot is 260. 
see if I can get the speed brakes back up here in a second. There we go. Let's see if we can hold it now. Yeah, there it is. It's doing better now. All right, so what did I learn in school today um, for this profile? If you find the FSIP panel profile, it does the, uh, the SID that you're doing is merit and the arrival, but they clear you on the JFK portion. So when you load it, you might want to load in, instead of the merit transition, load the uh, JFK transition, which will give you that whole leg there. But uh, we weren't filed that way. We were fairly merit and then the robot after that. But they certainly are capable of uh, re changing that, which they did. So we had to rebuild it come in. Um, they didn't go up to third. The profile was to go up to 33. Never made it past 21, which is fine. So set your cruise out to the 21, which will reset up uh, your uh, descent. Other than that, it's a uh, pretty straightforward. It's Providence. I like to keep my heading bug slewed around as well in case they start giving us vectors. You don't want to end up Turning the wrong way, and you don't have your headings plugged slewed up. You know, they say like turn right this, it's 180 degrees off, you turn left instead of right, you have to turn up the autopilot and get it all set up. So, most guys would try to keep their heading bug centered up. All right, so what's our next one? Uh, it's Providence above 11. Providence was well above 11, and so it was. All right, Cran at 250 and 12. Let me see if that's above, at or above. Cran, 250 between 12 and 11. Kind of fly along with the uh, VNAV. You do that in every aircraft. Yeah, if this guy turns out well, JP might put it up as an example, which is always fun. Kind of a trip. Yeah, it's a lot of features, and it's getting better. I, I actually don't know how long, and I don't even know how I found out about this, but I didn't see a video on it. I just kind of, I think I read about it. And um, but the rate he's going, he's putting scenarios in like every day, every couple of days, and Flight testing it, he gets people like me to do the controller. I haven't done it yet, but he asked me to at one point. Um, he, he he's putting in now more alternate things. Jet blue one three one eight, eight send eleven thousand feet, decrease speed two five zero knots. Send to one one thousand feet, slow to two fifty. Jet blue thirteen eighteen. All right, it's two ways to do it. I could do level change. If I'm trying to stay in the profile, I'm going to go tack mode and put in two fifty. Instead of 260, it'll be 250, and execute that. Make sure that's what I got. Here we go. It's a 250. It's going to change the uh, vertical nav a little bit. Might need a little help slowing down and getting down, but nope, it's doing good. If it's any builds, uh, A300 S600. It's real nice, nice product. It really is. I'm, I'm impressed. But I'll put a plug in for my boys over at TFDI when that rolls out. Hopefully in uh, probably end of April, maybe. Uh, it's it's a high fidelity. Is it a study level? I think so. It's going to definitely going to be. Um, but what is that? They, they shy away from saying that. But here's what I think it should. As an airline pilot, when I flew the PMDG triple seven, it helped me get ready for my recurrent. That's how accurate it was. The uh, this thing, if I was flying the A three hundred, it would it would help me get ready for my recurrent. I could do engine out. I could do non-ILSs, I could do you know VORs, things, holding, all sorts of things to prepare, prepare for my recurrent. That's study level. To me, that's study. Also, if, if I was going to go get a type rated on this thing, go to school in six months, and I flew this for a few months, a couple of months beforehand, I'd be pretty darn comfortable going over there. Uh, definitely. So that's that, to me, means this is a study level. And the TFDI MD-11 will be the same. PMDG products are like that as well, of course, as well as the Phoenix and, and others, uh, Leonardo and, and others.
i did notice that if you find these fsi panel profiles and you don't you do something wrong and they're not talking to you there's a good chance that you're off the profile that you've not done a heading you've done something incorrectly i've kind of blamed the profile a couple of times and then only to find out that i've quietly blamed him and only to find out that i have not done something correctly what's this video we're up to an hour 25 so we're going to be up to two hours for a 47 minute flight but what do we go over we went over fsi panel the basic overview of it how to set up um, the profile itself of course some of the things that are coming some of the features a little bit about jetblue 1318 send 8000 jetblue 1218 not 8000 right, there he is still in profile profile decent here we go and it stayed right on there that was timely 8250 below 10 we can ding him now and say flight attendants prepare for landing bringing these JetBlue passengers up in our A300. Let's, let's go outside and take a look around. Maybe I'll get uh, something from my video, YouTube video, a couple of shots. Boston Harbor coming up. Pretty nice, huh? Yeah, nice product. Very reasonably priced as well. Very reasonably priced. Out of 10, they're dinged. The decent check is complete. 8 for 10. Still on the profile. Yeah, I tried this. Uh, I got up at 6 o'clock this morning and I gave it a whirl. And uh, man, that any builds uh, scenery package is beautiful. You can walk around the Kennedy terminals with it, but it slows down the frames per second. I've had it's several videos I've had to uh, terminate just because it, it slowed it down so much. So went in. In order to put those in, you got to delete the Asobo package. So I had to delete the any builds, come back in, put the Asobo back in, and um, let that boot up. And it kind of delayed me a couple of hours. So running a little behind here but you guys didn't need to know that but my wife did she's upstairs expecting me to come upstairs and pull my weight okay so let me talk to you about something now we know we're gonna get the 7-4 on the runway right um, see this flight path vector see this little arrow here I'm talking about this right there that, that green arrow going up, so you got the wings, arrow. If you put the tip of that arrow on the horizon, you are on a, a, a good glide path. JetBlue 1318, proceed direct P-Trick. Direct P-Trick. JetBlue 1318. All right, nine for eight. Box. Direct. P-Trick. How does that look? Good. Insert. Execute. l -math. Here we go. And I want to go back to you for the moment. Fight pack, fight director on. Go. Can't keep the heading bug slewed around. Okay, so give us vectors. I like to be able to see the point I'm going to here. There it is, Petrick. And Petrick was supposed to be there at 220 and 5. 20 and 5. So we'll be looking for that. Level on an eight. Yeah, fun, fun stuff. I'll tell you, uh, this um, FSI panel. Really, I'm glad I discovered it. It's very great imagination. It's obvious the guy's an airline pilot the way he structures things. Just the whole uh, ability to put yourself multiple. Because what happens is we get in and we have four hours 
or six hours in the simulator and you've got to hustle to get all the qualifications that the FAA dictates complete. You mess something up and you are behind the power curve to get it done. So they, they, they take snapshots on final, like you'll be on an ILS. You don't know if he's taking a snapshot. He'll say, okay, here we go, I got the aircraft, and he'll snap you right back to where he wanted you to be when you're on there. Or even for instructional, maybe where you're starting to get off and he snapshots you to come back and say, this is what you were doing. Um, so anyway, we have that ability. We have malfunctions, failures you can program on the PMDG 73s, Phoenix, and the Mad Dog. Not on these yet, but he's, you can see those airplanes he had, 310, 300, 600, Fokker, um, I think it was an Embraer or something, uh, that you, they are trying to get it to the level where they can do everything. Uh, and in those, sometimes, like I said, if you just power on and hit start FSI panel, boom, 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 it programs your box, your clear your control panel, and gets you ready basically for pushback. Uh, most airplanes, 95% of the airplanes aren't capable. It's basically a comm package. But you can see, you can program the, the flows, you can program the after landing. Remember I did that, when I bring the speed brake up, it runs the after landing. You can also do that through the flows uh, button. Um, you can uh, do the radio frequencies, right? The say again button, the radio frequencies automatically Jet change. JetBlue 1318, cool. send 5000, speed 220 knots, final turn at 15 miles. JetBlue 1318, 15000, speed 220 knots. All right, 220, 5,000, um, and uh, we can come in attack mode, actually, yeah, attack mode, 220, and with that, we're going to need, um, we're going to need slides, slides extend. Send to five on profile. Trying to slow. What is our next one? It is 5,000 at Pitrick and 220. So I'm going to go level change, 220, and uh, 5,000 at Pitrick. See that amber, the um, the hook, right? So I know that uh, 220, 5,000. So 5,000 is our bottom altitude. We're above the rest. So I'm clear to stay on nav and do it through level change. And he said final turn in one five miles, so I kind of want to hustle down a little bit. So I think I'm going to uh, just bring the speed brakes out, get right down to five so that uh, if he dumps us in early, we're not high. So that's what I'm thinking. Even though Petrick, we don't need to be there until uh, Petrick, and we're going to get down around seven miles early, when he said turn, turn of 15 miles, uh, thinking maybe it's going to be a little early than that, so I just want to get down and be comfortable. So after landing, so there's really no other checklist that we can do automatically. We do have to remember we have. Uh, Approach checklist, sign, briefing, e cam status, altimeter, you know, condition. I'm going to do condition now. And the lights are on. This five. Cool, huh? Still flying the arrival. It's going to turn us on to downwind, I imagine, somewhere around. Uh, JetBlue 1318, maintain present heading, send 3,000 feet, speed 200 knots or less. JetBlue 1318, 200 knots or less, down to 13,000. Or 3,000. 200 knots. So with that, we can go flaps 15. Help us get down there. Gonna bring the speed brakes out a little bit. Help us get down. Get level change down to three. That's good. Shouldn't need the speed brakes anymore. He said 200 or less. Now we go to 190. And I'm 
want to take a look at this Wayne here. Uh, Wayne approach. We put out two supposed to be at Wayne. I was two two left. Wayne at three. Guys, don't be afraid to use a speed brake. I see some sim pilots. Oh, well, you use a speed brake. Uh, yeah, that's what it's there for. That's what the gear's for. That's what the uh, flaps for. The only problem with uh, lowering gear and flaps, uh, gear is you get uh, you get idle, higher idle off the amps. So speed brakes are there for you to use. Yeah, inexperienced pilots tend to think that's not there. But as airline pilots, we don't care about the passengers. In that case, we really care about um, flying the airplane, putting ourselves in the best position to succeed. Corporate I just get on that. I've got a couple of comments in my videos that put the speed brakes out, you know, early. Well, yeah, that's that's what you do. You put the aircraft in the best position so there's no drama at any point. Just a little bit of soapbox stuff there. Um, JetBlue 1318, turn left heading 240, clear ILS 22 left, speed 180 knots or less. Left 240, 180 or less, uh, clear the ILS 22 left, JetBlue 1318. Left to uh, 240, clear the ILS. Left hand turn, 240, heading select, 180 or less. A lot easier in the airplane, I'll tell you that. And JetBlue 1318, contact tower 128.8, have a good day. 28.8, you too. JetBlue 1318. I cleared the ILS. And tower JetBlue 1318 for the ILS 22 left. JetBlue 1318, reduce the minimum approach speed, number two behind heavy 747. Slow to minimum approach speed for JetBlue 1318. All right, guys, gear's coming down. Watching the course here. I don't want to hit localized. Sometimes it'll go flying over, over there. Gear's down at 3 green. Let's go all the way to box 3040. Once I roll out, I'm going to pick up the localizer arm. And what's the speed I'm looking for? It is uh, 126. Minimum approach speed, right? I'll go about 130. 126 is set. Clear the ILS. Watching it. I can see that I've got another couple of miles to go. Yeah, I don't like uh, hitting the ILS this far out on some of these aircraft because it'll uh, run out over there. Look his arm, glide soaked arm. All right, four landing checklist, please. Approach checklist signs. Landing gear, auto brakes required, anti skids check, flap slats, spoilers, arm, spoilers arm. Flap slats, landing flaps, auto brakes are needed. And anti skids. All right, good. Here comes the glide slope, here comes the course. There's the runway way out here. is to reduce the minimum approach speed, so that's what we've done. Um, this approach, we're going to have to set up for that. That's uh, 3,000, so this approach altitude is set in the window. Again, right hand turn off, hold short of the inboard. Boston. So I'm from Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Not Long Island. I'm from Rhode Long Island, but uh, so I'm a Boston fan all the way. Patriots, Bruins, Celtics, Red Sox. Um, yeah, you guys, sports fans. 
I just probably alienated all my Yankees fans. Giants, man. Well, you guys got the last lap. Beat us twice in the Super Bowl. Right now, all the free agency stuff going on. My Patriots are pretty bad right now, but hopefully they do well in free agency. So here comes the localizer. Here comes the divide slope. Pretty cool profile, guys. It's coming. Here we go. Get that heading bug around. In case we gotta go missed. Low capture. And glide slope capture. Here we go. 3,000 is set for the mist. Runway heading is set for the mist. Approach speed is set. Four lane checklist is complete. We're not clear to land yet. will be a right hand turn off hold short of the inboard over here. Go outside. Maybe I'll get a little picture for my video, right? JetBlue 1318, runway 22 left, blocked due to an emergency, re-cleared and visual approach, runway 22 right, standby for landing clearance. Okay, JetBlue uh, 1318, uh, copy cleared to transition over to 22 right. Alright, so we're going to go, um, flight director's off, autopilot's off. And I'm going to transition over. Now, the glide slope is pretty much the same. The display special in 2 2 left, that's what I was checking off there. So, if we fly the glide slope, it's pretty good. Now, I'm going to go, remember this? I'm going to go light flight plat vector, I told you, up here. There it is. If you remember, the top of that is three is a normal glide path. So, the, the only thing is, we can go a little below. The, this is the display threshold. This one is not quite as far. Let me show you. So you'll see that one's a little further down. So um, we're going to be sli slightly below the glide path. Uh, we'll be on for the uh, 22 right ILS. Plenty of runway. Um, yeah, it's really not about 7,000 with this place for so. Is that true? Uh, yeah, yeah, about 7,600, but less than that with this place for so. So yeah, we better be careful. I don't want to land long. So I'm going to fly a little below the glide path. 1318, winds 270 at 8, runway 22 right, cleared to land. Cleared to land 22 right, Jeff Blue 1318. So guys, I'm going to fly below the glide path, clear to land, and I'll look for a red over white when I get in there, because then this one, 22 left threshold is farther down. Not much more than that. And we are clear to land 270 at 8 is a right cross. Not much though. Flying below the glide path, looking for the Vazies. Somebody's right there crossing. That must be that seventh floor. Keep an eye out for them. Yeah, see how this uh, runway threshold is a little closer? Here we are, red over white. So that's we're right on the glide path. Looking good. So if we're right on the glide path, I should be able to put that little tip right on the horizon, and that's a three degree glide path. We should track the Vazies pretty nice doing that. See that? Right there. A little high, so let me get down low, put the pain point bottom third of the windscreen. There it is, tip back on the horizon right there. Not paying attention to that glide path because that's for the other one, right? Red over white, look at it. Short runway. 
Well done guys, scenario is over, welcome to Boston. Now just the time for a quick coffee and prepare your aircraft for the way back to uh, Kennedy on JetBlue 1317, just like a normal crew, we don't have too much time on the ground. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that scenario. If you have any questions or comments, head up to the forum, I will be very pleased to see your comments. And I would like to thank again the pilots that helped with the voice today, their names are in the lesson. Thank you guys and stay safe, bye bye. That was great. That was awesome. I'm going to do the shutdown, guys. Thanks a lot. If you wouldn't mind subscribing, it would help me a lot. Um, just for credibility, but I hope this helped a lot. I really, really, really enjoyed doing it. I honestly did. You're, you're running around with that any field JFK package or hate throw. You might want to get rid of it. I see an agent at the gate. Breaks apart, go to the overhead, seatbelt sign is off, APU is available, you can chop the engines. And then we'll do the shutdown checklist. So we did the after landing, right? So let's do this. Shut down checklist. Alright, so uh, let me go to the checklist over here. Let me go to the overhead. I should be able to see things happening up here. APU, get the air going. Yeah, they turned the fuel pumps off for me. There we go. They just get this running because of the APU. Uh, lights, they got the nav, logo, position, everything shut down. All good. Seatbelt signs off. And uh, let me do GSX. Request the boarding. See if it wakes it up. There we go. I mean, come on. I love this stuff. I love it. So let's go to the EFB. Uh, landing, we did all that. Spoiler, any skin spoilers. Box slats, it's all good. After landing, shutdown should be all done. I'm not going to take the power because there's people on the airplane. Open forward power, go with that. And then parking, if you bleed. Lights, fuel pumps, all window probe heat off. I didn't check the window probe. 
Uh, yep, it's off. And then parking checklist, fuel pumps off window what it is. Uh, nav system off, oxygen bleeds, we go upper overhead. Uh, nav system, we get those off. This one came out good. JP's going to be pleased. And uh, let's get some external power plugged in. Um, airplane's going right back out, so I would, I would probably, um, I would probably put the chocks in. I would probably keep the AP running. Definitely keep the AP running. Uh, I, I pulled the Jeffords back by accident. All right, guys. Um, people are just walking off into the uh, oblivion there. I guess I better go back and put that back on the airplane. It's always something here at Father Time, though. Yeah, be careful. Big step, big step, folks. Be careful. Big step. Look at that. You don't see that every day right there. You don't see that every day. Oh, man, that's a great way to end it. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Like the video, comment, join Discord, uh, everything. I really, really appreciate you guys. Thanks for taking good care of me. Uh, it's just Father Time from Boston, Massachusetts. Signing out.